is, which is from Simon Martin on uh, using AMS for understanding flow in analog magma intrusions. Simon, I have seen Simon's name somewhere. Can you see me? I have started sharing my video, but it's not doing it. No, we can't see it right now. Well, I can't. One second. Let's just go back to this. I did that thing we were told not to do. There we go. Yeah, there we can now. Cool. Uh, share the screen. Hello. So uh, I'm oh, Simon. Hang on. We've we've got the presenter view. Oh, typical. <laughs> Mean to. There we go. You got that? No? It's not changed for me. Just try display setting. It has now, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Cool. Apologies. So um, I'm uh, Simon. I've recently finished my PhD from the uh, University of Liverpool with Janine Kavanagh and uh, Andy Biggin. And uh, this is some of the work I did for one of my chapters on uh, using AMS for understanding magma flow in analog magma intrusions. Um, it's some work I did with a guy called Prokop Zavada at the Institute of Geophysics in Prague. So uh, how do we study dike emplacement in nature? Uh, we use a combination of geophysical surveys, uh, field studies, uh, ropey flow structures and macros, other macro scale fabrics and uh, micro scale fabrics like crystal alignment and also then uh, magnetic anisotropy. So in the laboratory, we study it through two different models, either a viscous indenter model, where we use a granular host material and a viscous fluid, or we use the hydrofracture type model, where we have an elastic host and then uh, either a Newtonian or non-Newtonian fluid. Um, so some examples of viscous indenters, we have uh, this one here where we look uh, to look at complex intrusion morphologies. We have a, there's an igneum, igneum bright powder um, and we need in, uh, golden syrups injected into it and to create like complex dike-like structures, little sill bodies and cup structures and or saucer shaped sill type bodies. But you can also look at the uh, host rock deformation. So here you've got a silica powder, um, and uh, it's been injected with golden syrup and using digital image correlation, you can uh, look at the, how, how different particles move during the experiment. In terms of elastic models, so the most common ones are um, using gelatin models. So this is a block of gelatin here. Uh, it's dimmed because it's uh, in a darkened room and then within the injected fluid, so in this case, it's water. Um, in this case, it's water. Uh, you put uh, small particles, which can be illuminated by a laser sheet. And then you can use a uh, particle image volosimetry to track where different, um, where the particles are moving through time. And you can, in this occasion, we've actually shown that there's a jet forming uh, through the center of the dike, and then you have a uh, flow, uh, down flow at the, the edges of the dike. So uh, the aim of this project was to understand the process that give rise to magnetic fabrics within intrusion, uh, analog intrusions. And my experiments are different because uh, they look at a combination of intrusion morphology and the associated mag magnetic fabrics that are formed. And, and then these magnetic fabrics can be directly compar compared with the ones we see in nature. So the materials that I use, uh, I use a fine grain wheat flour, about 420 kilos of it um, for each experiment. Luckily it is uh, reusable or the majority of it is reusable. So it's not as expensive as it sounds. Um, it's a cohesive granular material which deforms under shear and tension. And then for the magma analog, I use plaster of Paris um, with a mix of about 14, ki of, uh, 14 kilos of plaster and seven kilos of water. And then it's a pseudo plastic fluid with a yield stress and it's seeded with magnetite, with a magnetite dust. And then uh, it's also had, we also had a retardant which, uh, which then delays solidification from about half an hour, which can be the time scale of the experiment up to several hours. So all, all solidification is post emplacement. The magnetite particles that we use, uh, here's an example from a paper by Kratinova et al. And this is um, it's, it's the same stuff we use here. It's uh, 
like filings from from magnetite from the production of, uh, of I can't remember exactly what, but um, and uh, you can see the shapes and the uh, sizes. And so you're, we're we're talking pseudo majority pseudo single to multi domain uh, material. So the experiment set up. Uh, we have a 1.2 by 1.2 by 0.5 meter box with a piston inserted below and then the uh, the plaster is in a chamber down uh, down here and uh, it's injected at a constant rate and then you've got Go uh, GoPro cameras monitoring the surface. Um, some of the things we can change, you can have, uh, in include a membrane but various depths within the tank. Um, we can change the mixing ratio of the plaster, so between uh, lower viscosity fluids or higher viscosity fluids, and and can, we've coloured it in different ways. So using the concentric colouring, you can look at the internal fabrics and how they develop, or you can, uh, with the uh, sequential colouring, colouring, you can um, we can look at time scales of emplacement, so which parts of the intrusion form at what time. So uh, here's the uh, results from one experiment. Um, from the suite that we did. It's got a 2.1 mixing, a two to one mixing ratio. Uh, it's got no membrane present and it uses the concentric coloring type pattern. So at zero seconds, uh, this, is, this is the box uh, full. Um, it's covered with a colored sand, the, the surface like scattered on a bit like a Jackson Pollock painting. And uh, this is so that you can track multiple, ca multiple cameras can track the same points at the same time. And the ground, this is the area we're going to focus on for the next, uh, the next images. And these ground control points are 40 meters, 40 centimeters apart. So this is that section. And at 400, uh, 480 seconds time, time lapse, there's actually a, a, a fracture system starting to form down here in this oriented, uh, in this for, formation. So just go back so you can see that. And then at 985 seconds, you've actually had quite a lot of deformation. The uplift of this central section is uh, several centimeters. Um, you've actually got quite steep ring fractures formed. And then uh, at 120 seconds, they've actually had the eruption and a subsequent lava flow form. So once it's run, leave it to solidify for, for several hours. It, uh, we usually just do it, leave it overnight. And then, uh, so it's then excavated and cleaned up, and this is the sort of structures we see. Um, so this is that same lava flow at the top of the surface. The injection point is from below. Um, it is a radial dike system. It forms an initial radial dike system, which the, the, the third radial intrusion is out here. So you've got one, the other two there. Uh, there's like a central magma body, which is like a big solid blob with like a cup, a cup upper surface, and then a conduit to the to the surface and is in rare occasions we also get arrested dikes. So dikes which are formed but don't propagate all the way to the surface. Um, so looking at this section down here, uh, this is it blown up. Uh, you can on the surface of this you can see some consent uh, some curved ridges and these are actually asymmetric in shape and they're uh, in profile and I think I'll get to know that, that a bit later on. Um, yeah. And then, so then using slices taken perpendicular to the flow direction, so flow in this image here is uh, right to left and same right to left here, you can actually look, uh, see uh, how the internal fabrics in terms of the coloring have developed and you get this localiza localization here it, through the core of the intrusion. So here we now have the magnetic fabrics and in the uh, top right hand corner is the uh, AMS ellipsoid. And so here we have slices A, B and C. And what we do is we take five millimeter diameter uh, cores from each slice, as many as we can possibly get. Um, and then from these, uh, using a, we, we can then look at the AMS. And so this is what, the, uh, the, these uh, equal area plots show uh, magma flow is the arrow in the flow direction. Um, the star is the initial flow direction. 
This is the long axis and these are the short axes of the ellipsoids and circles. And what we see is uh, this, this red area, this is uh, the imbrication, maximum imbrication for flow for the left margin and the green is, is the flow for the right margin, uh, right hand margin. Uh, and these, so flow is coming out of the page in these images. Um, and what we see is samples collected from the left margin uh, imbricated in the correct way for, for inferring flow. And uh, this is the same across all, all slices through here as well with a slight, a slight dip. Uh, something to note is that um, all the samples are oblate fabrics, uh, some of them quite oblate. And then, so the diamonds down in this corner here, these are from the central zone. Uh, so these are more triaxial to prolate sort of fabrics. So if we want to link this to nature, which is something we can do with these experiments, what we actually see is, so these, this is uh, four examples of dike dikes with lateral flow from nature with the long axes and short axes. Um, and these, uh, what, these, what these show is that they, they fit within these um, imbrication zones. And then they also match up nicely with the imbrication that we get from th this model, which supports the interpretations from nature and also backs up the, mo the analog models that we've, we've performed. So the emplacement model that we've got, um, so initial, this is, this is what I've sort of developed and it's uh, initial emplacement with the, uh, the plaster through the center with a flow profile. Uh, and, uh, and then we get a build, a stress buildup at the tip and a breakout, which is then creating these asymmetric ridges on the sides here. This is because this is a top down view and this is like this asymmetric ridge in profile. Uh, and you get flow co concentrated through the, the center of the, of the intrusion with uh, then ob, ob, the oblate fabrics, which we see developed at the edges, which you created then by compression and shear of the plaster and the um, magnetite in the plaster along, along those margins and in those margin regions uh, with flow focus through the core. And then uh, this happens again here. Uh, so flow is further focused through, through, through the core and it gradually, it's gradually building and increasing the thickness up to a maximum thickness of about two cent, uh, about about three to four centimeters uh, for, for the thickness of these intrusions. With uh, multiple breakouts, creating multiple ridges and, and thus multiple stages of the of the floor. So uh, the magnetic uh, some conclusions of the magnetic fabrics in the intrusion course are just lateral flow along the dike, which is uh, supports what we know and the orientation of the dike compared with. Um, the injection point. The oblate fabrics in the margin suggest a compression of the plaster and imbrication of the flow towards the dike tip. Uh, imbricated fabrics in the intrusion margins correlate with studies of dikes from, the, from nature and uh, a range of external and internal structures observed in the experimental intrusions help to test emplacement models as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simon. Has anyone got any questions at all? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead, Well. Yeah, nice talk, Simon. Thanks very much for that. That was great. So, so based off the results that you have here, do you, what sort of data set, or, or do you have kind of a field area in mind that you can, most readily compare, or that you'd like to sample to compare to these results to try and really unite the analog model with, with, with the field example. Um, in terms of dikes, I think this uh, it, this can be applied to any any dike. So any where, wherever you've got really good exposure of dikes with no alteration, which is a which is a key point, um, then. Uh, you can so you can get primary flow and uh, and things like that from the dike. Then yes, there's, there's, there's a whole host of places you can go. Um, I've also done experiments or an experiment where I've also created a lacolith type body, and so uh, I've not sampled that for the AMS yet. But uh, for that, I'd like to compare that to somewhere 
potentially like Sandfell or like a sill type body like uh, like Mull, like the big uh, where you've got really nice several kilometer exposure of the same sill. Hmm. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I happen to know a guy who's got a good AMS data set from Sandfell. Uh... Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. there any other questions um, can i ask a quick question if you can hear me yeah we can uh, nice to, i i'm sorry i didn't get to meet you the the last time you're up in st andrew simon but um uh just cause, like because interesting talk just you know the way you your fabrics are comparable to, to field examples when you do this um this modeling is there is there ever an example of this post emplacement sagging or collapsing uh, you know, it's like a kind of a downward flow being captured within these fabrics, or? Um, so I did run an ex uh, a, a trial experiment with um, a mixing ratio of for plaster of one to one. So it was, uh, it was very, very liquid. And as we were injecting it, um, when we stopped the injection, there was downflow uh, back down into the... Um, back down as the conduit however with these large uh, with the larger intrusions uh, with, with, with sorry with a higher mixing ratio uh, left the gopro cameras running one time like way beyond like for a couple of hours afterwards and from what i remember i don't think we saw much much sagging at, so e e even in the lava flow at the surface i don't remember seeing much like that and then from and also from um just from leaving it and going in the next day the shape of the, the material in the conduit seemed very similar there wasn't a massive backflow into the conduit oh, cool. 